So if you guys are looking to amplify your streaming game, something that you guys can do is creating a custom stinger transition. This is going to add a level of professionalism to your streams, as well as making it very, very unique. So in today's video, we're going to be showing you guys how to do that. How's it going, everyone? I am your host for today, The King, and we are going to be showing you guys how to make a custom stinger transition. Now, as mentioned, this is going to be something that is pretty simple to do. It'll take some time, but once you get into it, it'll definitely amplify your streams, give a greater professionalism and make it look so custom and unique. This is going to be a simple tutorial and all you'll need to do is have one thing and that is an editing program. This can be something like Sony Vegas, which is the easiest to use or anything along the lines that you're comfortable with editing it. If you have never edited before, not to fear, we're going to be going step by step on how to do this in Sony Vegas and then showing you guys how to use this in Streamlabs or OBS all under 10 minutes. So with that being said, let's jump on into it. All right, let's go ahead and jump on into this. We are in Sony Vegas. We have multiple video layers. And what I'm thinking of doing is making a standard transition left to right. We'll have our logo in the middle, maybe give it a little shine. We'll see what we'll do. And we'll start off with some basic colors. You guys can use pretty much anything you want and customize this to your own ability. But for me, I'm going to use an orange and a red. I'm just going to grab some solid colors. And you know what? We could use three of these colors. Why not? Let's use an orange, red, and yellow. And our background will be white. This is going to be a stagnant background. We're not going to use that exactly yet. So we're going to turn that down. And all we do here is set this to be way, way, way shorter because these are five seconds. We want to set it to about one second. And we simply just do that. And that's pretty much it. So what we do, we're going to focus on the orange layer first. We're going to go to the event section or the pan and crop section, and we are going to create a mask. This mask is going to be a relatively skinny mask. We want the line to be uh, relatively skinny because you don't want big bulky lines. And we'll go to the position line afterwards. And what we're going to be doing is rotating this a little bit and we'll zoom in so we don't have that uh, gray area there and we will center this. Now, once this is centered, we are going to go all the way to the left-hand side, and then we will create a position and basically move it all the way to the right-hand side. And what's gonna happen now is we're gonna have a transition that simply just pushes the line just like that. Very nice, very cool. And all we're gonna do now is uh, copy this layer and paste it onto our other two layers. So we're gonna right-click, paste, right click and paste what this is going to do is basically duplicate that to every single layer we're now going to click on the red layer go to the positioning and simply move this a little bit towards one side so we're going to reset our timeline to go more to the start where we can actually see the color we'll start with the initial positioning and we'll move this a little bit more to the left or the right in this case i'll move it a little bit to the uh, right so we can get it at the top then we'll click our keyframe at the end where we can see the orange layer so we will go to right about here and we will affect our last positioning and we'll basically move this a little bit up and what we're going to have here is now a smooth transition with both of these colors uh it's a little bit fast so you you might not be able to see it right away but you get the gist of what's going on and now we simply do this with the orange color as well uh so we're actually going to snip these away because we don't need them and we're going to go to the orange, reset our timeline at the start where we can actually see the beginning of the animation. We will right click on that, go to the positioning and move this towards the other side. We'll keep it nice and skinny. We don't need it to be too thick. We'll go to the ending here and we will change this positioning to basically match that one up. So now what we have is a standard transition with three different colors. If you want to make it a little bit longer, you can hold control make it a little bit longer so you can actually see the full animation and that way it's a little bit more slow also don't forget to disable resample on all of these it will make it look a lot smoother and reduce the lag as you can see here and that is pretty nice so now that we have the three uh moving lines essentially we're going to put our white background in the back and now we basically need to replicate that and keep it behind everything so simply we're going to copy and paste again with the orange layer and what we're going to be doing this time is pretty much the same thing, but we are changing the mask now. So we'll go back to the mask and we'll expand the mask all the way to the right hand side. This is going to make it so that when this layer comes out, it will be completely white on this side and it will fill the entire screen. That's exactly what we're looking for. So if you play this again, we now have that with a white screen. We're going to expand this white screen actually. 
and um, we can actually, uh, if we go two frames there, we can cut that part and just re-add another white one so we don't have to mess with the layers. And simply now you can put your logo or whatever you're looking for. So I'm going to use this crown that I found on Google for free. And what we're going to basically do is start it in the middle. Uh, so we can start it right about there. And we'll get a few seconds, so we'll snip it about there. And what we're going to do is change the event uh, pan and crop. We'll zoom this all the way out. Uh, oops, I forgot to click on that button. There we go. We'll zoom it all the way out as far as we possibly can. We will move up a few keyframes, so we'll go up about there, and we'll hit the restore button. And then what that's going to do is make it so that the crown pops up. Uh, that's a little bit too big for my liking, so I'm going to actually zoom that out a little bit, and uh, we'll make it actually go a little bit more. We'll move back a few in, and then we will zoom it back out a little bit so it looks like it is uh, popping up its face, coming back down. We'll go all the way to the ending of this, and we'll slowly zoom it out a little bit more, and then we will fly it back all the way out. So what that is actually going to look like is what you're about to see here. Uh, if we can actually do shift B so it pops up like that and then goes away a little bit fast but it is to your own liking if you want to make it a little bit slower you can and that's what I personally like uh, we actually can make it a little bit slower just to show you what it does look like we just simply just move our keyframes like so and then once we do that it is a lot slower so we can shift B to show you that again and then BAM so that looks pretty nice we have the three white uh, we have the three stripes coming, we have the logo coming, and now we need to complete the animation. Basically, what we're going to do is everything we just did, but in reverse. Uh, so we're going to basically copy this again, paste it right at the end. So control C, control V, and now we're going to see those lines come up again. We'll just adjust this so it comes in a little bit quicker. So we can move these around. And I want them to come in right about there. So now we can see that the animation is already coming. And all we need to do now is to change the actual uh, pan and crop of the white image that we have here. So then all we do now is to click on the mask and we move the mask to where it needs to be, which is right about there. And when we play everything together, it now should look pretty good. And we actually have a little bit excess with the white. So in order to fix that, we basically go back to the start of the mask and we adjust where the mask is. So we just move it right here, a little bit to the left. And that should do it. If we look at this keyframe by keyframe, there's still a little bit white that pops up. So we are going to adjust that just a wee bit more. And if we take a look at it now, it is beautiful, but no white streaks left. And just like that, your animation is done. So all together, if we take a look at what we have here, by pressing shift B, it starts off, we have our little crown pop up, and then it goes away. So in total, it looks like that. A nice clean transition. Now what you need to do, this is the most important part, make sure you save. You are going to render this, and if you are using Sony Vegas, you need to use quick time in order to render this or whatever you're using to get a transparent background. So let's render it out. So you're going to see a little bit of inception now, but this is how we actually get the stinger transition to work on your OBS or Streamlabs OBS. You simply go to the option section here that says edit scene transition, and you're going to click on add transition. You're going to change this to a stinger transition and then browse the file that you just created. Once you have the file in there, the next thing we want to look at is the transition point. Now, this one is going to be personalized to you. There's not going to be an actual number that everyone can use. And this is basically when your scene switch. If you don't change this, what ends up happening is that your scene switches too early, like so, and your animation doesn't actually show. So what you need to do is to actually edit this and put a time, mess around, this is in milliseconds of what you think would work best. So I'm going to try 1200 out. And if we swap over to one of the captures, you can see that it transitions at a more accurate time. And that is exactly where I want it to be. Now, this is great. This is exactly what we wanted. And that's pretty much how you do the animation. Now, you can also do crossfades animations, whatever you like. This fully customizable to you. But that, my friends, is how you get yourself a stinger transition that's 100% personalized to you. Now, this was a very basic one that we showed you guys because we were trying to show you guys as fast as we can, but you guys can take your time with this. You can use different colors. You can use different gradients, your own logos, moving backgrounds, whatever your heart contends. As you guys know, I have a different transition 
that I use for myself, which is this one that you're seeing here. So you can do a circle transition like that. Everything is pretty much easy to do once you get the hang of it. I hope this video did help you though on how to make a stinger transition or a custom transition for yourself. But that, my friends, is going to wrap it up for today's video. As always, I'm the king. I did my crown to you guys. Hope you guys did enjoy, and we'll see you next time.